What's up, guys? My name is Brennan, and I'm joined with Trent. And this is Recall. All right, guys, what is up? Happy 4th of July to all of our Americans. Um, we've got Trent looking festive. I'm not so festive because I lost my bandana, but we're not going to talk about it because it's a soft spot. Anyways, we got a lot of news coming up with Rift Rivals, last week's games and LCS, all kinds of fun stuff. So, Trent, go ahead. Take us away. All right. Well, good to see everyone. Hope everyone leaves this 4th of July with the same 10 fingers you started with. Don't go Amen. blowing anything off in any fun accidents. But we had a pretty good week uh, last week, and since it is the season, I'm going to start with the NALCS. Perfect. I want to run everyone through the first off the standings for what this last week predict produced, and that would be a uh, four-way tie for first place, and then really? a three-way tie for fifth place in the NALCS. Dang. So those top four teams are going to be represented by Echo Fox, TSM, Team Liquid, and a hundred thieves. Okay. Following them is going to be CLG, FlyQuest, and Clutch Gaming. All have a three-way tie for fifth place. And then Golden Guardians, Optic Gaming, finally Cloud9, sole possession of Yo. last place. And this was with Jensen being in. Of course, we will have some more time to talk about this after I run through scores and standings, but that is worth mentioning. Wow. So last week, we did have the Cloud9 TSM game. That was the one I was hyped for, like I said. Had potential to be good, but mm -hmm. and Cloud9 did have the early game, but they just threw again, they threw their lead. They keep doing that. That's the running theme of their season. Hmm. So Cloud9 lost both their games last week against TSM, then Echo Fox. Um, both games were a throw at the end. Cloud9 can't seem to keep a lead. They mm -hmm. have a great early game, a great mid game, come late game. They don't know how to make decisions. And I can't tell if it's in the draft. I can't tell if it's in the just playmaking choices, but whatever it is, mm -hmm. they have stuff to work on besides player motivation because their shot calling is just not where it needs to be. Yeah. It's not LCS caliber. There's a reason they're in last place compared to teams like Optic and Golden Guardians. It's because mm -hmm. they're falling short in other things. Mm -hmm. But one of the biggest surprises of the week, and although they didn't play any super strong teams, is FlyQuest went 2-0. and Really? So that's what helped boost them to where they are, but they actually showed up pretty strong. Um, mm -hmm. And it was really impressive watching, especially Santorin. He had a standout performance on the uh, day two game where he played Kha'Zix, and he actually just stomped CLG. Like, mm -hmm. it was actually really impressive to watch him. Interesting. So um, besides that, the games were pretty good. Otherwise, Team Liquid destroyed Echo Fox. Uh, a funnel comp went wrong. Echo Fox tried to run a funnel comp with Alltech, and they basically ended up just feeding resources to double lift. He got <laughs> super fed, super strong. It was intense. Mm -hmm. 100 Thieves took a 2 0 weekend against Clutch Gaming and Optic Gaming. Um, and C Clutch Gaming, basically the same team they always are. They went 1 1 again. So yeah, they're I saw still they, pretty uh, consistent. They beat Team Liquid. Mm -hmm. They are extremely like so consistent and so average of the road they're like always one one it's really weird to watch them because they show these great things and then sometimes they just show these inting things and it's really yeah. hard to predict what they're going to do hmm. but that makes up the nalcs scene um we're going to move um, over to eu now uh eu's bracket it's a little bit more clear cut on who is strong and who's weak we have a two-way tie for first between misfits and g2 both those teams have been running only one style each. Misfits has been running solely marksman comps, and G2 has been solely running funnel comps. Yeah. So we have an idea of, you know, both these teams are really strong. It's hard to tell who's stronger, though, because they're running different strategies. Until they match up, which is going to come in this next week, the next time they play, mm -hmm. we won't really know who the best team in EU is. Yeah, for sure. In the tie for third place is Fnatic versus Vitality. Um, once again... Vitality has been running more mages, kind of. They've been running off meta bot lanes, but they've been more almost bursty assassins, whereas Fnatic has mm -hmm. been running almost sustained mages and bruisers. So kind of different, but a little more similar, but still hard to tell which one's the better team off the top of my head. I would say it's Fnatic, but there is way, no way to tell. Mm -hmm. The bottom of the table's a little closer cut. It's UOL, 
Shaka and Spice all being two and four. Spice had an undefeated weekend, but that still only gets them into sixth place tie. Oh wow. Shaka still kind of being just pretty disappointing, even picking up uh OG mm-hmm. or former OG but veteran jungler Shalk or amazing is it's still just disappointing to see them not picking up the wins we expected them to with the organization they technically are as a you know football mm-hmm. org. Like it's really sad. To be fair though, they played Misfits and Vitality, which both are doing pretty decent this season so far. That is true. I I expected better results against the Vitality, but mm-hmm. it is at least worth noting that they did have a, a pretty strong schedule this past week. Mm-hmm. Finally, bringing up the rears, H2K, who has yet to find their first win. <laughs> who did it's, H2K? Uh, they played Misfits, rough. and then they also played Splice. Ooh, they lost to Splice. Yeah. That's rough. Well, so they were both 0-5 going into the week. Yeah. So they were both 0-5 at the start of that game. Mm-hmm. Um, Spice seems to have finally found their footing, like I said, going 2-0, but it was against weaker teams, H2K and Rocket. Mm-hmm. But worth noting, at least, um, Fnatic and G2 ended up with a G2 victory, but still it was a pretty good game to watch. I believe Fnatic actually had the upper hand throughout the game until the very end, and G2's funnel comp kicked in, and Perks was just able to carry on Kai'Sa. Yeah. Other games to note that were pretty interesting was, like you said, Vitality and Shaka was a pretty good one to watch, I believe. Um, and honestly, there weren't many standout games. Like, really, there was a couple fun picks. I remember the giants Rocket game was pretty good because we got to see Kindred's first pick Ooh. in the LCS, I believe, this season. So that was really interesting. But That's just interesting for it's you, just, Trent. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Kindred main. <laughs> yeah, basically uh i don't know fun champion to watch but not a lot of standout matches this past week in eu lcs especially no big surprises like mm-hmm. every team won that you expected to being the only surprise really being that splice was finally able to get back on their feet um mm-hmm. going into lck we still have griffin and gen g and king zone all leading for first place um Griffin being a little bit better, but they haven't played all eight of their games. They're six and one compared to Jin's Jinji, King's Own X, and Africa Freaks all being six and two. Hmm. So they're just short one game. If they win, they're all of a sudden all like sole possession of first place. If they lose, they're in the four way tie for first. Yeah. Um, the other team is KT Rolster making up straight up middle of the pack, being five and three. SKT is kind of hanging out at the bottom at, or close to the bottom three and five, but the real bottom is BBQ Oliver's and Jenner Green Wings who are zero and eight. Ooh. So yikes. That's definitely where you don't want to be. SKT is the least above them. Um, mm-hmm. That being said, SKT has had, you know, another good or a pretty good week. They beat KT Rolster, which is really exciting. And then Griffin ended up beating King's Own Dragon. Mm-hmm. Uh, other interesting games would be Africa Freaks. Um, I believe they played against MVP. No, they played against Gen G. Sorry, that's the one. I was like, there was a good game between those three or those mm-hmm. two, but Africa Freaks beat Gen G. Um, so that put them in their tie that they're currently in. And SKT beat BBQ Oliver. So, like I said, SKT is still on an upward trend. They did lose to King Zone Dragon, which was that hype match I was telling you guys last week. Yeah. But that was kind of to be expected. So pretty good, you know, results to help figure out where everyone is. It did uh, figure out, you know, that Griffin isn't uh, no longer an 18 and 0 team. They are defeated by KT Rolster. So Mm -hmm. that helped make the four way tie possible. For sure. And it's cool to see that SKT actually was able to beat KT Rolster. Um, Yeah. I honestly didn't have high hopes for him, but it's showing a little bit of promise. Just a little bit, not much. Mm -hmm. But again, well, it's, it's we'll get so a better idea them. of where they are now that they had a good week, where they end up being at the end of Rift Rivals, which mm-hmm. we will talk about, you know, at the end of my segment. But I'll finish by talking about LPL and saying where we're looking at with those teams. Mm-hmm. So RNG was able to take a game off IG, so or the series off IG. So that means both teams are five and one along with JD Gaming. Mm-hmm. So that makes a three way tie for Group A and the LPL. If you're sensing a theme it's that almost all these major leagues have huge ties for their major spots Mm -hmm. now it's not necessarily extremely shocking but it does show that a lot of these teams a lot of these regions are inconsistent in who is the best yeah so like i said jd gaming royal never give up invictus invictus gaming all hold the first place spot 
followed shortly by Suning Gaming and El- and uh, Vici. The other and those are just the teams from the main group or mm-hmm. not the main group, but Group A. Group B also has two five and one teams. Hmm. So although they're split, there technically is five five and one teams in the LPL right now. That's crazy. Yeah. That's also Quite good. A, there's, then yeah, there's four five and one teams, and there's five or there's five five and one teams and four one and five teams. So <laughs> there's not a lot of middle ground in the LPL. It's very yeah. top and bottom. Like you know, the bell curve kind of goes down. It's it's weird. It's a weird season, but yeah, the matchups are pretty good. I would recommend the IG RNG game was really entertaining, really fun to watch. Um, other games to note was probably the. Um, Sorry, the EDG versus top team game. That was pretty good when I watched it. I enjoyed watching that one. Uh, the other one is EDG versus Rogue Warriors. Both were five and one teams. Rogue Warriors was previously undefeated until they did lose to EDG. Mm-hmm. So that was a really good one to get a watch. Um, but that's your week, you know, your previous week preview. Um, we'll preview the next week's games after Rift Rivals come next recall. But as it is now, I do want to bring up a very quick mention of the big news in NA. And it's already been hit on by a lot of people who are paid to do this, you know, and aren't (laughs) doing it as a hobby like Brendan and I are. But the Meteos trade to FlyQuest. Oh, I saw that. That was, man. Post 100 Thieves 2-0 weekend, and this makes them a 4-0 winning streak. Mm Mm-hmm. A uh, tweet was made by Medios that he was notified he was traded to FlyQuest and that he would not have an opportunity to compete for a starting position. Now, this was very huge news. It you know, took me by surprise, took a lot of people by surprise. A lot of people couldn't figure out the reasoning behind it. More news has come out since then. Mm-hmm. And you know, much like overreactions and early reactions are supposed to be, it wasn't entirely true. There's more reasonableness to the uh to what happened but uh sorry but um basically 100 thieves fly quest management aren't as evil as everyone thought they were yeah. medios did overreact but it's hard to completely blame him based on the situation mm-hmm. i don't want to talk about the politics of it realistically like i said people are paid more than me to do that and <laughs> that's not my job i do want to point out though the straight up level of worthiness of the trade yeah so Medios for Anda is a straight up downgrade for me. Even a unmotivated Medios, I feel like, is on equal level at at worst to Anda. And I honestly think he's still better because yeah. they were still pulling out pulling out four in a week. They were still doing well. I I have to question the Hundred Thieves management just because the trade does not seem worth it to me. Mm-hmm. But for what it's worth, they did try and act early. I think that's, you know, at least notable. On top of the fact that they traded Medios for Anda, even if he even if they evaluated that yes, a downgrade was worth the risk, so that way Medios couldn't just up and leave the team, mm-hmm. they shouldn't have been looking at a jungler in the first place. They should have yeah. been looking to pick up a native mid laner or a better native top laner than Brandini in their academy and Lin Sandy in their academy team. Yeah. They should have been looking at Cloud9, and who's to know? Maybe they did. I'm only making the speculation based on, you know, not yeah, knowing the full story and yeah. not knowing all the details. There is zero reason to pick up a mediocre jungler when you have Levi on your academy team. Mm-hmm. Because although Levi hasn't been performing great on academy, if he was having all of the resources of 100 Thieves poured into him, I have to believe it would accelerate his growth and it would make him a stronger player. Yeah, for sure. So just... Your move should have been getting an NA mid laner, any that you can find, or an NA top laner that can hold his own, and putting Levi in the starting roster. Realistically, mm-hmm. just a mid laner because you shouldn't be taking out Sunday. And yeah. I'm sorry, Ryu, that sucks. That really does. And maybe they should have negotiated the deal with FlyQuest to include Ryu. Yeah. Maybe that would have been your best option. That so that way you can pick up their NA mid laner or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It was just, it seemed like a very poor decision to me, just from a straight up like comparing the two yeah of course it's hard to tell with motivation issues but obviously the motivation wasn't a huge deal because medios came off of a 4-0 you know four winning streak Mm -hmm. the team was four and two and they started the lcs zero and two so clearly his motivation was fine because he kicked in the gear and they ended up going you know 
on a four win streak. I you know yeah. I keep saying that, but to me, it's just shocking that they actually went through with that trade on such short notice because the way it sounded in the official release from 100 thieves makes it sound like medios requested the trade this split and even if he requested it after week one it doesn't seem like they were looking that hard looks like they were just trying to get him out of there as quick as possible yeah so like i said not getting into the politics of it but from a straight up comparison standpoint i think the trade is terrible Mm -hmm. i think that 100 thieves is going to very quickly lose their spot in the top four. And in all honesty, they could join Cloud9, Optic Gaming, Golden Guardians as a bottom of the barrel team. Yeah, I can definitely see it. That's my hot take. I don't think that it'll be very good. Um, Mm -hmm. So hopefully, hopefully that, you know, Levi's going to play at Rift Rivals and they'll hit that soon, but maybe he will overperform and 100 Thieves will start looking for their replacement mid laner or top laner so that way he can start playing on the main team mm-hmm. for sure the dude hard carried and when he was playing for gigabyte marines so hopefully we get to see that come again that'd be awesome for sure but on a lighter more fun note we get to have <laughs> rift rivals this weekend yeah. um and it is a super competitive but super fun event it's almost like a perfect in between of like an msi and an all-stars mm-hmm. not last year's all-stars but like the fun all-stars yeah because it gives teams a good chance to play standard. Well, at least play as standard as you can get in this meta mm-hmm. and scrim against each other and learn some things, but it's also not hyper serious. doesn't have any big implications on worlds or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So it should be some good, fun, lighthearted league of legends while still also being, you know, giving some teams some good practice. At least that's the hope. Yeah. But uh, for NA and EU that starts tomorrow at two thirty uh, central time. So adjust accordingly. And we're gonna have our first game being Echo Fox and Fnatic. Ooh. Following them is gonna be Liquid Spice, Liquid Spice, and then Hundred Thieves G two and Echo Fox Splice. Um, that will be your first day. Your second day will have uh, Liquid going up against Fnatic, which is the real hype matchup, mm-hmm. and um, a Hundred Thieves versus Splice, which will be the mediocre teams matching up, which could be entertaining to watch. Liquid G2 could also be fun, but I'll go into why I don't think that will be in hype matchup. And I believe it's because G2 is going to dominate the tournament. Really? Sadly, despite the glasses, despite the shirt, despite the holiday, yeah. I can't realistically going into go into Rift Rivals and say I expect G2 to not win. Because G2 has only shown a funnel comp in EU, mm-hmm. and they're a 6 0 team, basically seem like they're playing almost perfectly but league of legends and people have only seen them on one strategy mm-hmm. so you can look at this two ways as being whether or not g2 actually can do anything else and they're just hiding it mm-hmm. or they can't do any other strategies and they're just solely doing funnel because that's all they know how to do at the moment like that's yeah. all they can successfully do and there's some merit to both those arguments but i don't believe g2 doesn't remember how to play standard i think they can perfectly but they've had no reason to show that that's fair so even if liquid does pick up a game in the group stage against g2 i think come finals g2 will be like okay we'll just run both our strategies and you won't know who to ban and you won't have anything to do and we'll dominate you yeah so the best of one series will be thursday and friday um i expect the games to be pretty even because although i think g2 is better i think splice is clearly much worse than any team na is bringing in Mm-hmm. 100 Thieves is a variable given their swaps, but hopefully 100 Thieves does come to perform. Um, but when we have the actual final stage, which is going to be a kind of weird format, um, you can look at it online. It's The best way to describe it is a relay race. Mm-hmm. Basically, it's not you know whoever does best from NA and whoever does best from EU gets to play against each other. It's the regions as a whole competing against each other. Mm-hmm. so it's pretty um, it's an interesting format and i really do like it but i don't think we'll see realistically a very intense finals finals because i think the games g2 gets to play they'll win yeah for sure no i agree um yeah it's it, hey, it sucks to be real it sucks to admit that i don't expect uh an a win at rift rivals we won last year though so it will make the t- score one one and if we don't win, we always have the excuse of jet lag, right? Even though it's in an ALCS. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what it is. It's jet lag. 
Um, but the other side of the world, we have the Eastern Rift Rivals, which should be a little more interesting. Yeah. Because we're going to have LCK versus LPL, and the LMS, the little brother, is also going to be in there too. So uh, <laughs> we'll have LPL bring in their teams RNG, EDG, Rogue Warriors, and Invictus Gaming. And if you remember, those were four of the five five and one teams. Yeah. Ooh. So they're dominating. Yeah. LCK is bringing Kingzone Dragons, Africa Freaks, KT Rollster, and SKT1. Now, those last two teams are doing a little bit weaker in LCK, but Kingzone Dragons and Africa Freaks are also tied for first place in LCK. So if Kingzone comes to perform and they're playing really well, that will make the whole tor- tournament very fun and very entertaining for that region. Yeah. LMS is only bringing uh, four teams, but their team, G Rex, and I believe machi are both doing pretty poorly in their region so i wouldn't expect a lot from them but Mm -hmm. could throw some interesting you know a wrench into the best of ones and you know take some games off here and there to make the tournament a little more even keeled yeah um your hype matchups are going to be right off the bat on the first day rng versus flash wolves which is arguably the best lms team versus the best lpl team yeah going up against each other we're also going to have um king zone versus flash wolves the next day and invictus gaming versus skt1 on friday the 6th okay uh rng versus king zone the rematch of msi we're going to see that friday the 6th as the final game of the day um i don't know it should be a very interesting tournament. Like I was saying about Rift Rivals, they're mm-hmm. serious, but not too serious. So I don't expect this to mean a lot for the world's implications, like to say what teams are strong internationally. Mm-hmm. I think it's some good international practice and some good scrim time for all these teams. For sure. For sure. Yeah. So that's my two cents. Hopefully we don't <laughs> see the continued, you know, despite the holiday, we don't see the continued blowing up of all these NALCS teams with all their trading and benching and all that stuff. It's, it's insane. It's been a weird season. The, I thought the off season was crazy, but the main season has been even worse. <laughs> so it really has. This is, it's, it's crazy looking back. Cause I don't, I don't follow. I've never followed league of legends too closely, but I've always been there. Right. Cause we played like fantasy mm-hmm. or something like that. So I keep up with it. And nothing has ever amounted to like this season. This season is just right. so off the wall that like I don't even know what's going on. Like I just don't. I don't even know how to like predict anything. It is just all kind of happening, and I'm just going with it as it goes. It's been so rough to get through, but hopefully we have some more stability come in as we go farther along. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Like I said, I didn't pre- preview week four of all these regions because when we come back from break from Rift Rivals, all those games will just be starting, so it'll be better to do it then when it's fresher and everyone's fine. Yeah, for sure, for sure. All righty. Well, Trent, we appreciate you as always. Great awesome. insight, great glasses. I appreciate them. I wish these I had things my are so awful to see out Dude, of. I don't know how you're doing it for this. I'm long, sorry but... for the weird eyes I keep giving the camera, but I just I have to like. <laughs> look a little bit because i can't see through the bars beautiful beautiful i refuse to take them off but i can't see through them like these are awful well perfect people actually wear these designs like (laughs) Uh, like as a regular thing i I saw this in the dollar bin at walmart (laughs) but do people like go outside and like try and pretend these are sunglasses i've i've seen some white girls that like beaches and whitewater tried to do that i don't know how effective it was but i mean who knows who knows so awful it's the worst thing ever yeah it's... but refuse to take them off have some pride for na and rough travels yeah it's pretty rough but anyways we'll go ahead and jump into overwatch we don't have a lot of news um i will preview the grand finals a little bit but not too in depth because it'll be next week and like trent said it'll be more fresh on everyone's mind so we'll get real into that uh one bit of news that did come out this week is south korea announced their world's team so we have the world cup coming up uh that'll be after the grand finals and i think it's before the all-star break if i remember correctly so i think it goes grand finals uh world cup and then all-star game and all-star game will be a lot of fun but here is this stacked let me repeat stacked roster of the korean roster on the dps we've got sabiobi libero carpe and fleta 
all four of those of being probably some of the best DPS players in the Overwatch League, just straight up. Uh, Sabe, Obi, and Libero are both like the duo on the New York Excel. We got Carpe on the Fusion, and then Fleta is that star DPS player that the Dynasty tried to center themselves around, but they didn't do too well. But again, Fleta is still, he's Fleta. He's amazing. Everyone knows that. Mm -hmm. um, as far as tanks go, we've got Fate, who's from the LA Valiant. We have Mecco from the New York Excel. We've got Fissure, which I'm super excited to see him play with some really good players. Uh, we got Fissure for the Gladiators and Fury from Spitfire. So that's some stacked tanks. Some of the, I mean, Fissure, arguably the best tank there is in the Overwatch League. Um, Mecco's close second. Fate is also very, very good. Um, it's just, it's too much. And then when we get to the support side, we have Ark, we have Jay Jonak, Animo, and Kareev. Kareev's really good. He's on the LA Valiant. Ark's on Excel. Uh, Jay Jonak's on Excel. And Animo is also on the Excel. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six players. It's six. It's like a full team. Like they could run a well, the, not realistically, because the positions aren't completely even. Yeah. But there's so many Excel players on that team. Yeah, it's actually just insane. If they want to do a weird three man support, which they probably could with J. Joe Nike, but it's just it's crazy. Um, that team is going to be very very good. Um, I I really don't know who's going to be able to beat Korea. Honestly, <laughs> that team is just so stacked. They are going to put on a clinic and i can't wait to see it honestly it's going to be a lot of fun to watch them um i'm definitely interested to see fleta play with a team around him that actually knows what they're doing um we've seen the dynasty go up have their up and downs and honestly here lately it's been a lot of downs and so this will be a nice little refreshing view of what fleta can actually do with a good support behind them so i'm really excited for that um that's the only team that we've had announced in the world cup so far um so that should be coming out within the next week or two we'll start getting information on what the u.s is going to do uh we do know that jake will not play for the u.s team this year um we've got that confirmed from jake himself i couldn't tell you why and i don't know who's going to be on the u.s team but it's a little sad to see him not going to be on that team so you think sinatra will be there I definitely 100% think Sinatra will be on there. The reason I think Jake will not be on the team is, one, he is a very one-dimensional DPS player. If you look at him, the previous World Cup, before Overwatch League was even started, he played Farah and Junkrat, and that's it. That's really all he could do, and that's basically really all he can do now. Every time he tries to hop on the Genji, sometimes he hops on the Tracer, but he's not good at those things. He's decent, mm -hmm. he's all right, but his real, real strong suit is that... Um, those projectile champions, which are Junkrat and Fair, And even now, his Fair isn't even that great compared to some of the other Farahs, like, um, let's say, I would say Fleta. We've got, um, I can't think of his name, darn it. Well, we'll move on. But anyways, so he's definitely yeah. not the best DPS out there anymore, like he was just a, Another, a year ago. But I'll still be sad not to see him on that team. Another question I have, and I noticed that when you were going through the roster, where's Pine at? That is definitely interesting. Um, I think it's just they had a hard cap on New York Excel players, and you can only take up the whole Korean team so much. Like, your limit is half the Korean team can be your one team in Overwatch <laughs> League. Like, it's what's that about? It's definitely possible. I think the biggest thing is they were trying to include more than New York Excel players, obviously. Mm -hmm. And Pine feels kind of the same role as both Carpe and Fleta. Okay. Um, Sabobi is just like this tracer one trick almost. He's not a one trick, but I mean, almost all the time we see him on tracer. We just, mm -hmm. you know, about Sabobi's tracer. He's probably yeah the best tracer, if not maybe second or third. Um, Libro is going to be more of the Genji type player. Um, he'll sometimes hop on a maybe a Junkrat or a Farah. Uh, Carpe is going to be always playing on the either tracer. He's got a Widow. His Widow's really good. His Junkrat's okay. Um, and then Fleta just kind of plays whatever he wants to because he's Fleta. He's usually the tr – um, not Tracer, sorry, but he's usually the Widowmaker. Um, I think that's what we've seen the most out of yeah. him is that Widowmaker. Just, he's so good on the Widowmaker. Um, and so I think that kind of takes the spot. And then they'll also throw in the McCree on Carpe as well. So that kind of like seals Pine's spot. Um, Pine is known for his McCree. He's known for his really mm -hmm. good Widow. And that's about it, honestly. He can play some other positions, but 
that's about it as far as his um, yeah the pine the pine widow you know spider manning behind the team is just so iconic i was wondering where he was but i think you make a good point it's not necessarily extremely like unbelievable he's not on team it's just funny because that's one more person who could very easily have been on that Mm -hmm. uh, world cup team and now all of a sudden it's literally more than half the people on it are excel players yeah it's it's absolutely nuts and i kind of like it it's kind of funny but Mm -hmm. hey it just shows you how dominant the Excel organization is, and we'll see how they go moving forward. But on the topic of moving forward, we do have the Grand Finals next week, and all I'm really going to do is give you a preview of what's going to be happening. Um, we do have – so this is interesting. There's going to be three weeks of the Grand Finals, right? So the first week we start off with, I guess, what you would consider the quarterfinals, um, and then after that we move to, say, the semis, and then finally the finals. Um, yeah. So on week one, which is going to be next week, July 11th on Wednesday, we're starting it off one week from now. Uh, we got the Philly Fusion playing the Boston Uprising. Um, after that, we also have this London Spitfire playing the Los Angeles Gladiators. From there on Friday, it's kind of weird how it's set up. So it's split up into two different um, matches. It's a best of three technically. Okay. okay. So we're going to play three a best of three of best of five. This is going to be kind of confusing. So they're going to go through a five-game set like we're used to in the regular Overwatch season, right? They're going to okay. do that three times. Oh, interesting. Very interesting. But they're splitting it up between days because that is a lot of Overwatch to be playing in one day. That is. So, so basically, okay. I think so, I what you were saying. So Wednesday, I, Friday, and Sunday, they're going to – if Sunday, if they need to, obviously. But they're going to run a best of five on each of those days. Yeah, so basically, okay, so on Wednesday, we got the Philadelphia Fusion versus the Boston Uprising at 5 p.m. They're going to be going through that best of five. After that best of five is over, we're doing the London Spitfire versus the Los Angeles Gladiators. That's a best of five. So we're going through those two. Then on Friday, July 13th, at 5 o'clock, we've got their first, the Fusion versus the Boston Uprising. And then at 7 o'clock, we have the Fusion against the Boston Uprising. So they're getting their two best of fives out of the way. So it's going to be split. So they on Wednesday, they each team has one best of five. And then Friday, the Fusion and Boston Uprising both have their two next best of fives, which are against each other. And then Saturday, it's Spitfire versus Los Angeles Gladiators, which will both be best of five as well. So there's three best of five. So they're still avoiding using Sundays. They hmm. are still avoiding Sundays. Yes, that is indeed That's... correct. They only use Sundays for the for finals for the finals. And even then, Grand Finals will never have a Sunday on the list from what I'm looking at here. It all ends on Saturdays. That's, that's really strange to me. I mean, yeah. but from there, someday you can just yeah, for sure. I agree. It's it is kind of weird, but whatever. We'll take it as they do it. <laughs> but from there, we will go to our semifinals. From what I can tell, <clears throat> with how this is looking to play out, um, the New York Excel and the Los Angeles Valiant already have spots in the semifinals, just because they were both the first in their each respective division. The Excel being the Atlantic and the Valiant being the Pacific. Um, and it's the same exact thing. So whoever wins out of, I think the Fusion and Boston Uprising will play the New York Excel. Whoever wins out of Spitfire and Gladiators will play the Los Angeles Valiant next or the week after that, after next week. And it'll be another best of three, best of five. So three best of fives again. Mm-hmm. And then the finals week will be another best of three best of five and those will be the two finalist teams and that'll take two days so that starts on the friday july 27th and then ends on july 28th saturday so it's definitely an interesting format it's a lot of overwatch that's a lot of overwatch Overwatch. for one team to play and it's going to be very i think it's too much i honestly think it's overkill um in my own opinion just because that's so many maps, and I'm pretty sure. Let me check real quick if they have the maps. I posted. still think I think finals should have been a best of seven. Um, test a little more endurance, endurance, and uh, I mean, just run it on a Friday and a Saturday for each team. I think that I agree with you. That's a lot of Overwatch. It that's really, really adding way too much. I feel like to the teams, like it's just that's overkill, like you said. Yeah, let me look at the maps real quick. So some of the maps, they are using what looks like to be all the maps that are in rotation right now. Um, so we'll definitely see King's Row again. We're going to see Volskaya, Eichenwald, Oasis, Dorado, Junkertown, uh, Lijang Tower, Hanamura. Let me see about if I can see. 
Huh, it doesn't, we don't even have the maps posted for... So I guess they don't have the maps posted for the third matchups. The third matchup might not even be needed. Because if they win the first right. two, then it doesn't even matter. So I don't have the match post-ups for that yet. But it looks like they're going through all the maps as much as possible, from what I can tell. Because last... I think last uh, split, or sorry, whatever, we didn't have... Stage, yeah. yeah. I forget what map we didn't have. But they took one of the maps out and added in uh, Volskaya, and then we added in um blizzard world as well i didn't see blizzard world on there so i wonder if the third best of five will have blizzard world in it most likely but yeah it's definitely gonna be interesting um as far as predictions go um we got the philly fusion versus the boston uprising i honestly think the fusion are gonna pull this one out with how recent events have been going um it is worth mentioning i forgot to say this we will be on a different patch than stage four so this will be the patch where the Hanzo rework is actually live. Um, if you remember correctly there, Hanzo used to have the scatter arrow, but now he has the what's called storm arrows. He just shoots arrows really, really fast. They have reduced damage um, compared to an actual arrow, but they shoot really, really fast. So, um, And he also has the ability where he can like do a weird jump where he like, moves forward. So he jumps, you jump again, you like shoot forward a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. So his scatter arrow is gone. He's got those two new abilities. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if we actually see him come out. This will be a new patch that they're playing on. Uh, Brigida will still be within the meta. Um, we will not see the nerf on. I can't remember who got nerfed. Actually, I think Song. Oh, we won't see the Symmetra buff. Symmetra just recently say, got buffed. Didn't you say Symmetra got buffed or reworked again or something like that? Yep, Symmetra got reworked. Um, we'll talk about her once she's actually in competitive play, but she's freaking annoying now, even worse than before. But, <laughs> um, yeah, we won't be seeing her. We'll just be seeing New Hanzo, uh, Brigida, of course, and that's about it. So we'll see how that works out. Um, there's not a lot of difference between old hanzo and new hanzo other than scatter arrow isn't there anymore which i mean it's no longer a easy tracer kill now you just have faster shots mm -hmm. so maybe it still is but it's not brain dead like looking down and shooting at your toes and killing someone um and so we'll see if he's ever used in the meta i'm really excited to see how this works out we could see the boston uprising changing the meta like they usually do because usually i think they're a very meta based teams so just kind of like the houston outlaws Depending on the meta, they're either really, really good or just meh. I think that's what we saw last stage, because stage three, they were amazing. Stage four, they were very, very meh. And this may be a new meta where they can really shine they can or just it could be teams, yeah. horrible. So I'm going to favor the fusion here. I can see the Boston Uprising pulling it out. This one's going to be very, very close. I think it's going to be one of the better quarterfinal matches um, compared to the gladiators versus spitfire but i'm really excited for this one i think this is going to be a really good matchup um overall it's going to be a really good overwatch and like i said as far as spitfire and gladiators go i think gladiators just take this easy peasy i don't see the spitfire. You don't think it goes to the third i say i i say set. i say the first set of best of five is going to be either three two or three one um after that and i don't know if they're going to play all five maps i didn't check that so if they do play all five maps it's going to be four one easy 4 1 or 3 2, easy. Maybe, I don't know. After that, I think, like, Gladiators will have their name at that point and just easy 4 0, 5 0, whatever we want to mm -hmm. call it. Um, I don't, I really don't think the Spitfire have a chance, just based off of what we've seen. Stage one, they did really well. Stage two, they did pretty good, but kind of not as good. Stage three, they just disappeared. Stage four, they were still kind of just not there. I'll say they barely um, eked by. Barely. Know? They barely made playoffs. The only reason they made playoffs is because their map differential was so good from stage one to stage two. Um, in my opinion, they don't deserve to be here based off of their most recent showing. Um, I think they're the team that's definitely going to just go out and we won't see them again until next season and we'll see what they do to fix it. Um, and like we heard on our last podcast, our last episode, uh, they are the C9 organization. We have no idea what's going on with C9 right now. Their Overwatch team is struggling. Their League of Legends team is in last place, which I haven't seen ever in my time of viewing mm -hmm. League of Legends. And their CSGO team, eh, they're doing okay. They just added a player called Stiko. I'll say the CSGO team added the temporary player from CS or from uh, what was the team they got him from? From Mouse, you said? Yeah, Mouse Sports. 
Yeah, and I mean, they did decent. I know they're out of the tournament, right? Or yeah, they, lose they, they just lost today. They went 2-0 against Astralis. Astralis is really, really good right now. They got, I mean, they beat, uh, I think, Navi, which was pretty good. It wasn't horrible, but at the same time, it wasn't the greatest. It's just real middle ground. Nothing too bad. It's not there in last place, so it's, uh, I wouldn't say they're horrible so, at the point. Maybe since their CSGO team kind of started this downward trend, Maybe that means everyone else is about to be back on the up and up. Hey, we can hope so. Yeah, I know that's a decent narrative. It's 4th right? of July. Yeah. I mean, we can give them our power. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. But, yeah. But, yeah, I think Los Angeles Gladiators take Spitfire. Easy peasy. No big deal. Um, from there, it's going to get really interesting to see who moves on um, when we see the Excel game and the Valiant. I honestly, just with how it's been going, I'm assuming Los Angeles Gladiators are going to play against the Valiant and – that's going to be a throw-up. You could toss a coin, and you'll never know who's going to win that one. That's going to be a really, really good right. game. I think Excel can beat either the Fusion or the Uprising, easy-peasy. And it's going to come down to the Gladiators or the Valiant trying to beat the Excel. And honestly, I couldn't tell you who's going to win that either, just with recent events and all that. Mm-hmm. And again, we don't know what I think is Excel. Like. I think Excel ekes it out by the end of finals. I'm going to say Excel. No play, the endurance required for three sets of best of fives. That's true. I think XL has the upper hand there. But, of course, we can preview that when we get closer to it, when we finish the first stage of finals and, you know, know what teams are playing against what and who's going and, you know, yeah. which seed, I guess I should say, and who's playing who. So that'll be good then. For sure. We'll base it off next week. We'll be able to have a decent understanding. Um, even next week, we won't really, as far as our episode of Recall, we won't be able to tell. But after week one of the grand finals is over, We'll have a pretty good grasp of what's going to be going on, and uh, and we'll go from there. But that's going to do it for me. Uh, really not a lot more news coming out. Again, we're just kind of waiting for the World Cup teams to be announced. All we have is Korea right now, so there's, I think, 27 other teams that we're waiting on. <laughs> uh, there's, yeah. quite, there's quite a few, so quite a few. we're just uh, chilling out right now and waiting to see what happens. But other than that, that's all I've got. Trent, do you have anything else to add before we head out? That's all there is for me. Awesome, guys. Again, happy 4th of July. If you're not American, sucks to be you. Um, happy July 4th, regular old day. Happy have, Wednesday. Ha- have a great Wednesday. Um, we appreciate you guys as always. Like, subscribe, give us a comment. Tell us how your grandma's doing today. Um, that's going to do it. So, again, oh, got to plug our social media. I forgot that one. I knew I was forgetting something. Oh, yeah. You always got to plug the Twitter, dude. Got to do that real quick. So I am at Brennan H underscore. It's still wrong on the overlay, but I don't give a fudge. Um, and then we got Avius at Avius Gaming. That is going to be Trent. You can follow him. Enjoy him. Uh, Trent, I just kind of realized I thought about something. I didn't ever link your channel in that other video. You didn't remind me. That's your fault. Though. I think I did remind you. Did, you no, you use... did not. You did not remind me. I, I promise you. Okay. We're going to settle this dispute after the video. Yeah, but that's, that's, good. that's good. All right. Anyways, guys, we appreciate you as always. Take care, and this has been Recall. Bye.